Hello there, my name is Joshua Harris, I'm head of support at MailParser, and in this video we're going to go over the basics of our service and ultimately how to parse data from your emails and make that data available via a directly downloaded Excel file. MailParser is a web-based service that allows you to automate the process of converting emails into easy-to-handle structured data. Once this example setup is completed, your emails will be automatically forwarded to our app, which extracts only the data points you need, and then this data is made available as an Excel file hosted on our site, saving your business many man hours in the process. Right now we're looking at the home page of my test account. This is the first thing you'll see when logging into our app. At MailParser, most of our customers send their emails to us through automatic forwarding rules set up on their mail client. We have extensive documentation on setting this up on Outlook and Gmail in our knowledge base under the Help and Support tab at the top right corner of the app. We have many frequently asked questions and down to the support desk answered here. For convenience, I have already forwarded a few example emails to the inbox I have created, Box1. All of these emails are of the same format, simulating hotel satisfaction survey web form emails. If you have multiple formats of emails you wish to parse, in most cases you will need to create an additional inbox for each template, as our parsing rules will require the data to be in the same place in each email in order to be uniformly extracted. I'm going to click on the Box1 box to access it, and as you can see we land on the Statistics tab, showing the overall activity of the inbox over the last 30 days, to include emails imported, data points parsed, and webhook data points sent outbound to integrations on the web. The Emails tab shows the emails we have imported and are storing on our servers. You can click on an email to view the parsed data points, the original email as it was imported, as well as the status of any webhooks that have been sent out. Navigating to the Parsing Rules tab will give us the option to create a manual parsing rule or to try our automatic setup wizard, which will try to create parsing rules based off of a few templates that we have built. The basic web contact form template works for the emails I've created, but for learning purposes we're going to create them manually. In the Parsing Rule Editor, we are going to start by selecting the part of the email where your data is located. We can target the subject, body, attachment, recipients, and headers to begin filtering out unrelated information. The objective when creating parsing rules is to use filters to isolate one individual data point at a time. If you have repeating line items in a table, you'll be trying to isolate each column in its own parsing rule, which is covered in our video on sending parsed data to Google Sheets. For these emails where the content is basic text in the body of our email, we can typically use basic start at and end at filters to single out the field that we want. I'm going to select the body of the email as the data source, and for the version type here, we're going to choose HTML over plain text, though either would be fine here. Now we can see the initial parse data below. For this rule, let's extract the survey number. To start, I'm going to tell the editor I want only the data after survey satisfaction number if it appears in the email. I'll do this by clicking Add Text Filter, Set Start Position, Find Start Position. When you're creating parsing rules, you'll find that there are often multiple correct ways to isolate the data you need. We could also simply look for space hashtag space, which will also work. This would only be problematic if this string showed up before the data point we actually wanted. From this point, all we have to do is Add Text Filter, Set Start and End Position, Define End Position. By default, we have the optimal filter end of line, which automatically ends the parsed results on the top line. It may make sense for you to not end the expression at the end of the line, but instead before the next blank space, which we also have a filter for. You may also need to stop the parsed results before another string. For example, I could set the filter to end before name, but this creates a blank line, which I have to clear with a replace and remove, remove lines and entities, remove empty lines filter. After saving each individual parsing rule, all emails in your inbox will run through our parsing process, which generally takes just a few seconds, so you can quickly switch back to the Emails tab and verify the rule you created works consistently for all of your emails. Armed with this information, the rest of the survey is a snap to parse from. Once you have all the data parsed with the rules you've created, we're ready to create the Excel download. So let's go to the File Downloads tab. After clicking the Create First Download Link button and selecting XLS as our format, we're presented with the download options. We'll start by giving the download a name, then define what data we draw from. Some customers want this to include all of the emails in their inbox, in which case we would use last 10,000 emails, or if you wanted to download a monthly report once a month, you could use Emails Received This Month. Under Include Fields, by default all fields includes every parsing rule created for the inbox, received at and processed at times, always in GMT, and the message ID. If you wish to include only certain fields in your download, you can check only those fields as well as change the format of certain fields, like timestamps and dates. 
You can opt to not include the parsing rules names as labels in your table, and if you have a parsing rule returning multiple results and you wish for those results to stay on the same row for each email, you can define the row structure to append those results horizontally to the same row instead of creating a new row. Now that we're finished configuring the file download, we can now save and test it. Everything is looking good here. If you want to change the order of the fields, you can click and drag the rules in the Parsing Rules tab to where you want them. So that just about wraps up this video. If you have an issue with getting set up or have any questions, please feel free to raise a case with us at support at mailparser.io and we will investigate and help you find a solution. Have a good day.